Have you always had that that perspective on it of like being open about it, allowing people, or was that something you had to develop through? Because your your disability is uh, cerebral palsy. That's right. That's it. Yeah. So yeah. cerebral palsy. It's a neurological condition I was born with. So I uh, yeah, about eighteen months old got diagnosed, and then um yeah that and. And then I used, I got uh, probably my first, ch- I used a work wheelchair to get around, like, well, for all my mobility day to day. And then I had my first chair when I was probably like three. And then I've got one periodically, like every sort of five years. Mm. But yeah, like, um, I think, yeah, I think I put a lot of it down to my family, parents and, and siblings that just sort of, they just threw me in and, and did it. And I was never left behind by my family, like. You know, and, and not saying it's like, like there are a lot of families out there that put family members in respite for disability care, or whatever. It's completely fine, but I didn't. I was all like I said, all the, I hated camping, but I feel like my parents gave me the opportunity to hate camping because they took me on the camping trips and they took yeah. me on the holidays. So they could have easily said, "Oh no, nah, we'll go camping, but we'll leave you at home with grandparents or aunties and uncles or." in some sort of care but no no just come on the holiday and like i said they gave me the opportunity to hate camping so i am in a funny the irony is i'm thankful that i've had those experience to know what i because the worst the worst thing you could say i think to me and i've had this before is when i've had people say i couldn't go somewhere say a nightclub like nightclubs and i'd have people i'd have mates go oh. they go oh, we're going to this nightclub and i'm like oh, i can't get up there and they're like, oh, okay, well, you're not missing out on much. It's not that good of a place. It's like, no, no, I want to know if something's shit. Mm. I want to make that decision for myself. So that's what bothered me sort of. And as you said, in terms of developing it, I reckon I was probably early 20s where I let a lot of that sort of angst and anger and frustration go about the world and about people, about their attitudes towards disability. And instead of going, well, it's all their fault, I just sort of let it go and I went, well, okay, well, what can I do in my own little world to make it better or how do I make myself feel better about it? So, yeah, I was probably like 20, after I finished uni, so 21, 22, started to work through some of that and mm. just let it go, uh, just let a lot of shit go. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean, I remember carrying you up the stairs at the Grand Hotel plenty of times. We had yeah. a blast. I think I might have yeah. dropped you one, once or twice, but sorry yeah. about that. But <laughs> yeah, oh mate, yeah. But that's the thing. Like I and I think I had no no shame really back then either. Like I was like, but I think sometimes I, on reflection of that, I probably overcompensated like socially and like I was. You know, as I said, be like drinking and have, I, I'd put myself, I'd, again, it's similar to the stand up when I started. Like, I had to be, the, I felt like I had to, the pressure to be funniest. It was also like, I had, when I went to uni or socialized or, you know, met new people, I was like, I've got to be this outgoing, like, funny dude. Because I've, you know, I want to sh- show that I'm like, regardless of disability, I'm just still a dude having fun, drinking. Whereas, probably in my heart of hearts, I'm probably a bit more introverted. And probably, probably like a bit of, you know, my own space more and probably a bit more chill. But back then I was like, I've got to be up and about because I've got to, because if I'm not, then they may not ask me out the next time or they may not, I might be for, for like, they might just go, ah, he's a weird, he doesn't say much. So we won't. And then I end up sort of sitting in your, in my room for weeks at a time. Yeah. Um, And you don't want people to you don't want people yeah. to just think you're the guy in the wheelchair, right? Yeah, that's a, yeah. But I, so I think, yeah, I always made an effort to be like this, this like funny, social, like overly social butterfly type, extroverted dude. Whereas probably nat, my natural instinct sometimes is to be a bit more reserved and probably introverted. Which is a weird. I haven't really thought about that for a while, but there you go. That's that's uh what we have what happens on the life of Saurus. The podcast is called that, Can We That's right, mate. Yeah. We, we have epiphanies, we, we have epiphanies, we have breakthroughs. <laughs> um, yeah. But that's sort of where yeah, where it all come from. And I and I've been super lucky to meet so many nice good people, school friends, met plenty of good mates at uni like you and a few other boys that were just like, ah, oh, it's fine, whatever whatever. Um, so yeah, I always, but yeah, made, made the effort to, to just be, and I think that comes from my parent too. They were like, you, 
you know, they never forced anything on me. They were like, you know, just get involved. Like they mm. encouraged me to move away to uni. They said, get out of here. Leave that, leave the house, leave Albury. Get to like, go away. Yeah, and, that's, and that's they, great. They were always there to help me. I remember the first sort of month I was in Wollongong, I was struggling. I don't know about homesick, but just, just with life like stuff in life I was like you know doing stuff and then they came up and they'd come up whenever I want them to or they would come up regularly anyway to visit but I remember they, they have always said like just get do it go overseas like work save your money spend it overseas go out like go to parties so yeah, yeah. It, they were always mum yeah mum mum always especially mum she always pushed me and said you will you will enjoy it there was a few of those conversations you are going and you will enjoy it. <laughs> you will have <laughs> that, fun. Yeah. No wonder you're not a bloody introvert anymore. Yeah. You're forced out of it. <laughs> yeah. No, that's it. You just, you, that, you just... Yeah. Well, that makes a lot of sense though because um, knowing you at uni, it's, that was, it was kind of inspiring because uh, you never let that stop you from doing anything. Yeah. And so it makes sense that that's where you've got that, uh, that mentality from. Yeah. And I think... It's, yeah, just try not to use the disability as a sort of too big of an excuse. Because mm. I think that comes back to that. I didn't want that attitude of other people to be going, oh, he doesn't go out because he's in a wheelchair. Yeah. Or But whereas it's probably, you know, I didn't want to go out to the nightclub because I didn't really like, when I was 19, I just didn't like nightclubs. Yeah. But there was part of my head that was like, if I don't go out and like be the leader of the like, you know, full of laughs and chat and fun, then then I get sort of labelled as this like, yeah, like I said, just the guy in the wheelchair that doesn't do anything. Mm. Um, but yeah, I've sort of worked through that too and just you just got to live your life.